everybody, this is Dr. Maples. Today, I wanna to start a new section on my channel talking about the history of the amazing Red River Gorge rock climbing community right here in Kentucky. Now, as many of you know, I just finished up writing a book on that, and that's available on Amazon now. I'd love it if you check out a copy. But in the meantime, I wanna spend some time on my channel talking about specific pieces of that history, breaking it down, thinking about it, and even including some things that didn't make it into the book. For our very first episode in this series today, I want to talk about what is the first climbing route in the Red River Gorge climbing community's history. Now, all my climber friends out there watching this video, you're probably thinking of a particular route that you've been told for ever was the very first climbing route. Not to question that, but I do want to throw in some other possible routes you might consider. And in fact, here's what we'll do. I'll list all the routes that I think would be amongst the first, and I'll let you vote on it in the channel comments below. So you let me know what you think the first route was based on your criteria. I love to hear the conversation. All right, well, we got a lot of first routes to talk about, so let's get started. Now, first things first is the route that many of you were most certainly thinking about, and that is Caver's route. Caver's Route is a 5-3 that's located at Towers Rock, Tower Rock. Um, this particular route has no FA listed, but it's almost always been referred to as the first climbing route in the guidebooks. Not really sure entirely where that came from, but definitely John Bernard suggested that it might have gone back to the 1950s. That could have been where we started thinking it was the very first one. And it's interesting because this particular route, it's got um, a word in it. Anyone? Oh, it's got the word caver in it. Yeah, that kind of gives some extra mystery to it, right? Maybe it's not a climbing route. Well, that's actually kind of the thing. You know, in the 1950s, we don't really know that climbers existed. We know for 100% sure that in fall of 1969, climbing existed because that's actually when the Cumberland climbers were formed. We'll talk about those a little later in this video. But in 1950, there could have been some people climbing, scrambling, but we don't really have any evidence that there's a recorded climbing history. What we do know is there was a whole bunch of cavers from the Bluegrass Grotto and other groups in the region, including Cincinnati, who were coming to this area, not for the caves so much, but to practice their caving techniques above ground. And there's not really a ton of cave opportunities in the Red River Gorge. You'd need to go to other parts of Kentucky for that. But what we do have is a lot of really cool rock in the Red River Gorge that would let a caver come in and practice their techniques. Now, for those of you who have maybe never been rappelling or caving, it's dirty, it's dark, it's damp, and it's a horrible place to try and learn a technique for the first time. You wanna try that above ground to make sure you know what you're doing so you don't end up hurting yourself. That makes perfect sense. In fact, there's plenty of evidence that Tower Rock, and more specifically, Caver's Route, would have given Caver's a great place to practice layback, knots, even a little bit of shimmying, all sorts of other stuff that they could have been doing above ground to practice it, rather than trying it for the first time below ground. Was it the first climbing route? Well, we don't really have a clear answer on that. In my book, I do talk a little bit more about maybe some folks from the Bluegrass Grotto that might have set this route up for the first time, and I'll give you a hint. They were cavers, not climbers. Let's throw some other ones in there, and then again, I'm gonna let you vote on this in the comments. You decide what you think the first climbing route would be. Now, here's another one, and this one's gonna surprise you because all the climbers are saying, hold on, Dr. Maples, we know with this one that Tom and Larry put this together in 1974, and that's definitely not the 1950s and 60s. Uh, you're right on that. You know, uh, Tom and Larry put this route up, Arachnid, 1974. Frank Becker has that one in his guidebook, and this one's set in stone. This one's really famous for the dihedral, but remember, it's really close to Caver's route. It's right around the corner from it. And the big mystery when they finished this route was smack dab at the top of the ceiling, there's just this random bolt sitting there and no one has the exact story of how, when, or why it got there. Now, a couple of cool things. Frank Becker's guide does talk about this mystery bolt being there. And then Tom talked about the fact that in an interview that the Cumberland climbers were actually using this area back then to practicing some layback techniques. And on top of that, I've actually spoke with people who were in the Bluegrass Grotto in this period of time and who are cavers in the region who have mentioned that, yeah, this was probably an area that they were practicing and they're fairly certain that that happened at Arachnid as well. So even though Arachnid was a climbing route in 74, it had actually been a caving route, if we want to call it that, 
well before that. In fact, that also puts this probably right along with Caver's route with being one of those really early 1950s routes that we don't know a lot about that probably weren't used by climbers, but were definitely being used by cavers. So depending on how we want to define it, this is probably another one of those earliest routes to consider. And again, it makes total sense. It's perfect spot right around the top, right around the side from cavers. It would make sense that they'd be using both sides, a tower rock. It's just a logical thing. They probably came around the same time, but it's still one of those early routes we have to consider, even though it was officially established with RFA for climbers in 1974. Now here's one that'll surprise you and you probably haven't heard of. And that's Minas Tirith. Minas Tirith is one of those routes that people just don't talk about, but it's a beautiful place to go out and see it. In fact, if you've never had a chance to go out and see this route, it's absolutely gorgeous. Go check it out at uh, sunset in the fall and you'll be very pleased. It's worth the walk. Now, we do know in the 1970s, we're not sure exactly when, but Bob Compton did finish this route that's near Muscle Beach. Martin Hackworth actually is the one who kind of popularized this route when he was working at Muscle Beach uh, in his guide in the 1980s, Stones, Stone of Years. And in this particular area, he talks about this route being finished by Bob Compton um, without aid in the 1970s. But just as this amazing little side note, he mentions, oh, and there's this guy, Joe Hayden. He did it in 1968 using aid. So it's kind of exciting. We have an aid climb from 1968. We don't have a lot of information beyond that. If we want to count that amongst the early first ascents, it's the one of the earliest ones that we would know of, 1968. Um, but we don't really know much more beyond that. In fact, I haven't been able to find out who Joe Hayden is. I haven't been able to find Bob Compton. And unfortunately, I haven't been able to get a lot more information about this route in general. So if you're any of those folks or Martin Hackworth too, and you got some ideas about this route's history, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear more about it. I will say Martin is an amazing piece of the Red River Gorge's history. He ties back to that early caving community. Um, and it's cool because as a caver, he worked with Bluegrass Grotto. In fact, I even found, I think it was a 1975 newsletter where he did the cover for them, uh, cover art. And on top of that, too, he worked with several of those early 1970s climbers like Frank Becker, Larry Day, and so forth. So lots of people knew Martin, climbed with him, and he's one of those really cool um, you know, tiebacks and throwbacks to those early days of caving in the red and how these two communities are just synonymous during this period of time. Now here's one that you probably have never heard of. It's definitely in the guidebooks, but it's probably one that you never even thought about climbing. That's Bolt Route. That's up at Courthouse Rock. See, I know, you're like, bolt route? That says exactly what the route is, right? It's a bolt and a route. That's exactly what it is. It's up at Courthouse Rock. This one is a weird one. Turns out, in the 1960s, we remember that Cumberland Climbers start in 1969, the fall of 69. That's when they're founded, September, actually, of 69. Um, but there may have been some folks climbing in the area that, A, weren't even part of the Cumberland Climbers, B, didn't even know those climbers existed, and C, really didn't necessarily want to do anything with the climbing community. Otto Mock was one of those people. It was a group of firefighters, uh, life-saving rescue workers, and so forth, that were climbing together in the Red River Gorge around this time. And they basically just kind of did it to A, have fun, and B, just practice their work because they needed to be able to work with ropes as part of their jobs. Now, Courthouse Rock and Bolt Route provided a pretty cool opportunity for that. It's the same way we think about some of these caving routes. That was a good playground for practicing your work while you were having fun. The year on this one is a mystery. It's been listed as 1967 in some of the guides. It was listed as 67 in the online Ellington guide for a period as well. And speaking with Otto, it might have been 67, might have been 68, might have been 69, not 100% sure. It's just one of those things that the history fades. I mean, it's been 50 plus years. But this definitely has some very early history. And also, if it was from 67, I mean, that's putting it up there with that route with Joe and Minas Tirith. We don't really know exactly when this one was founded, but it definitely gives us an early piece of climbing history. And like Cavers too, this was just a really cool opportunity to see how all sorts of people were thinking about climbing in the late 60s. Now, then there's some routes that you have heard of. In fact, you've probably even climbed maybe one or two of these routes that are still available. That's starting in the fall of 69 when the Cumberland Climbers are founded. Now, the Cumberland Climbers are officially the first local climbing organization that I've found in the Red River Gorge's history. This particular group is founded on September 8th of 1969, and they are a Sierra Club affiliate. Now, why did they found? 
Well, this is interesting because there was this whole piece of history that climbers don't know about where in the 1960s there was a strong movement by local residents, politicians, and more to flood the Red River Gorge. They were going to build a dam and flood the whole thing. And it most definitely would have changed climbing history for the worst, I would say. It also would have been one of those things, too, that probably would have prevented it ever really growing as a sport community in the 90s. So it probably would have undone the Red River Gorge's climbing history before it ever even got started. Now, I do talk a lot about this flooding history in my Red River Gorge book. Feel free to check that out. And if you'd like me to do a video on that in the future, leave me a comment below and I'll see what I can do. So when the Cumberland Climbers set up shop, they are part of the Sierra Club. The Sierra Club led a national resistance against the Red River Dam and eventually won. They led to the dam being declined. And again, even when it tries to pop back up in the 70s at a different location, it was fought and pushed back again. So it does not exist today. And also because of laws that have been signed since then by uh, George Bush, President George Bush and President Bill Clinton, um, this area is protected and it's not going to see a dam ever in the future. So it's protected for now but it was a really scary moment point uh, moment in the history of the Red River Gorge back then the Cumberland climbers though found it as part of this uh, Sierra Club local organization that was here some of the people involved in the Cumberland climbers were in climbers some of them were activists some of them were naturalists so really there wasn't a ton of climbers in the group but there was over uh, close to 100 names on the roster if I remember correctly talk more about that in the book as well anyways the climbers they Cumberland climbers established themselves September 8th and right off the bat, that fall, they were putting up some really cool rocks, uh, routes. First off, they start at uh, Chimney Top Rock. They put in uh, Chimney to Chimney, uh, August 31st. I'll talk more about that route in a moment. They put in Tunnel Route September 7th. They put in Chimney Direct at some point in September. We don't know exactly when in the 1974 guidebook. Also at Half Moon, Ron's Garden, that's Ron Stokely. Uh, they put that in in September. If I remember correctly, the story behind that was because it was called Ron's Garden because there was so much stuff growing in there and it was a lot of work to get into it. There's also Tourist's Horror, which has sort of a double uh, moment to talk about in the history of the Red River Gorge. First off, um, it was put in as, on October 12th, but second, it's probably the first lost route that we know of in the Red River Gorge's history. So uh, this was established in 1969, and the horror of it, per Dieter Britz, one of the important climbers from that area and part of the Sierra Club, or sorry, part of the uh, Cumberland Climbers, he pointed out that you could see this route from Natural Bridge and the horror of it for the tourists was that they could see people climbing up this thing that looked totally blank um, and trying to figure out what those people were doing. Today, that route is actually lost. We're not exactly sure what the route was. In fact, by 74, Frank Becker points out that he couldn't pinpoint what route this was. Either way, it would probably be a closed route, as a couple of these routes are. So keep that in mind before you try to repeat any of them. But these are all routes that would definitely have a place on that list of conversations about what's the first route in the red, particularly that very first one, Chimney's Chimney, which we'll talk more about in a moment. These are all early examples of the Cumberland Climbers work in the area too, something that's continued today with the LCOs here. I do wanna say the Cumberland Climbers reportedly put out a Cumberland Climbers guide. I've never found a copy of that. So if you are fortunate enough to have a copy of that sitting in your attic somewhere, please leave me a comment below or Google me on the internet, find my email and just send me an email because I would love to see a copy of that so that we could help to document a little bit more of that history if you'd be so kind as to support me on that. Now there's one more route that I wanna talk about and it's actually one that I already talked about that's Chimney's Chimney, but this one, it's got a little more history. Now it's Chimney, Chimney, Chimney's Chimney, that's a lot to say, in the 1974 guidebook, but it's actually had a couple of names and it started out as Ledford Route. Ledford Route is probably the singular route that has the most history in the Red River Gorge that's documented. It's also probably a good choice for the most, uh, or the first nationally known climbing route in the Red River Gorge for a couple of reasons. So let's go through this. First off, it's in um, August 31st of 1969, Dieter Britz and Ron Stokely finish up this project. Now this is a project they've been working on since June 8th, and it's a two pitch project. They finished one of the pitches in June, and over the summer they work up to August 31st where they finish the second pitch and the, well the full route um, at that point so August 31st ends up being the first ascent 
There's a couple of names in this one, though. The Ledford part actually goes back to the person who owned the property uh, alongside Chimney Top at the time. And um, the uh, Dieter Brits and Ron Stokely had to cross his property to get to the route. He gave them permission to do so. And so they kind of named the route after him as sort of a, a thank you. Um, I talk about the details of this particular part of the route, too, in a separate video if you're interested. I'll put that in the link here. Now, for the route, it's been called a couple of things. It was called uh, Chimney's Chimney. It's been called Stokes Ludford Chimney. Um, there's even um, like a Stokes Ludford route that's been called. It's just got lots of names. Any way about it, it's a closed route. I want to very specifically say that, that it is a closed route, so it's not one that you can go climb today. Um, but this is an exciting one. It also had another early name in there, Bob Stokes. Bob Stokes was involved in the Cumberland Climbers, and he was only in the red really for a couple of years. But again, he's one of those names that pops up on a couple of those early routes. He probably worked on this one since it ended up having Stokes Ludford Chimney included in there um, at some point, but he was not part of the first ascent that I know of. Now, this particular route finished August 31st. It's cool because Dieter and Ron wrote up the history of the route, talking about their first journey over there on June 8th, talking about Floyd Ledford, talking about how they scouted out the route and more, and then put this in a Sierra Club newsletter. We're not sure what year it was published, probably late 69, early 70, but we don't know really for sure. This is something that somebody might be able to find in the Sierra Club archives, however, just to, something to put that out there. But it ends up being a 180 foot route. It says 120 foot on my slide there. It's 180 feet. No, it's an 80 foot pitch and a 100 foot pitch. It's a long route for the Red River Gorge, but it's a closed route, so don't go try it again. One of the things, though, to link the old with the new, when speaking with Ron and Dieter 50-something years later about this route, both of them talked about the Copperheads and just said they were everywhere at the foot of Chimney Top Rock. And yeah, even today, if you hike over there, I'm sure that you'll find many a Copperhead as they are really scattered all throughout the Red River Gorge. They're probably your biggest fans. They're just watching the climbers, right? Watch for the Copperheads, and they're watching out for you for sure. So there we go, some of the early routes in the Red River Gorge's climbing history, all of which, depending on how you want to define it, could be considered the first. So you tell me in the comments below, what do you want to do to define the first route in the Red River Gorge's climbing community history? Do you want to go with the one that's got the longest history? That could be Caver's route, or maybe even Arachnid. Do you want to go with an early route that has an unknown history element to it? Could be Arachnid, definitely Bolt Route, and Minas Tirith. Likewise, do you want to go with the earliest documented routes? That's for sure going to be the Cumberland Climber routes in fall of 69. Or do you want to go with the one that's got the most documentation of its start and finish point and its completion first ascent history? That's going to be that Ledford route that's gone by a dozen different names. There you go. There's are, those are all my candidates for the list of the first routes in the Red River Gorge history. Again, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts on it. If you got a little bit of history to add to this, let me know as well. And most certainly, if you know somebody that's got that Cumberland Climber's Guide, please get in touch with me. That is the biggest piece of missing history in the climbing community right now that we have. So if we could unlock that piece, that would be an amazing thing, and I sure would appreciate your help. There's my list. Vote. I want to hear what you have to say. I'll be sure to write back. I'd appreciate it if you'd share this with your climbing buddies, and I'd love it if you'd like and subscribe to my channel. I'll have some more climbing reports, studies, archive material, and history coming up in the near future. That's all I got for today. Take care of yourselves, and I appreciate this climbing community supporting me and working on that book and writing your history. I truly appreciate the support, and I truly appreciate getting to just be part of your community. Climbers rock! Take care and let me know if you need anything. We'll talk soon.